Well, if you have your Bibles, I would uh, like to open the Word with you this morning. Uh, so if you have your Bibles with you, turn to Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. I'd like to uh, revisit something I mentioned earlier, uh, and that is what some have called uh, the Pauline cycle. Um, so in Acts uh, 14, this along with chapter 13, uh, this is kind of the record of Paul's first missionary journey to and through Asia Minor. And he and Barnabas traveled through and preached the gospel in each of the principal population centers in that region of Asia Minor. And uh, so we pick up in uh, verse 21 of Acts chapter 14. After having been stoned and left for dead, Paul somehow, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I assume, rose and uh, rose up and with Barnabas he went on to the next city, which was Derby. And so we read in verse 21 there, when they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. One of the, first of all, we see the goal was discipleship. Two things here. Um, they did what Jesus had, had told them to do, right? What did he say? Matthew 28, there in the Great Commission, he gets told them the command was make disciples. And, and Luke saw fit to use the same word here to describe what Paul and Barnabas was do, were doing there. They were doing what Jesus told them to do. They were, it says they made many disciples, same word as you find there in Matthew uh, chapter 28, to make disciples. And it's important, I think, to note that they kept this as the main thing. They kept this as, as their primary purpose uh, in going out to make disciples. You know, we can get into all kinds of, of ministry, and much of it is good. Um, you know, we were recently, uh, but we can kind of lose, we can lose focus on what we are here to do, and that is to make disciples. We were recently in a conference or kind of a pastor's fellowship and um, where the, the speaker used the analogy of, of a spear. And, and he says, making disciples is the tip of the spear. That's, that's where all the action uh, takes place, right? Uh, if you're using a spear in hunting, that's, that's, uh, uh, that, that's, that's where all the action takes place in, 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 in doing away with that animal. Um, and, 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 and so often, though, a lot of what we are doing, and it's not that it's not important, it is, but a lot of that, what we're doing is shaft work. We're working on the shaft of the spear, and those are important things. There's things there, but we need to be about, and all of us, this isn't just for those um, that, that may be going overseas or, or as missionaries or pastors, but we're all called as those who are followers of Jesus to be about the work of making disciples. And, and you know, that, I, I think that happens best a lot of times one-on-one -on -one or couple-on-couple, -couple. Uh, you know, life-on-life. -life. Uh, that's how discipleship takes place. It certainly happens uh, in, 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 in this, in a, in, a, in a group setting. It can happen, but where it ha has to be happening is one-on-one. Is -on -one. So it's just an encouragement, I think, to us all. And I believe that they were about that business of making many disciples. You see often in, in the book of Acts, you see a Paul spending time with people. It wasn't always that he was in a group setting, standing in front of a group of people. There was much opportunity. If you just want to take the time when he's making tents there uh, with, with those that were his uh, you know, I think it was, was it, uh, and I could be getting this wrong, but was it Aquila and Priscilla that were, was it was also a, a tent maker. But they, there was lots of opportunities where they were, where he was spending time one-on-one -on -one, uh, making 
disciples. Uh, that's got to be our goal. And I want us to note here that while they made many disciples in Derby and in other cities through, throughout Asia Minor, their work was not complete. Um, these verses, they kind of fall at the end of the record uh, of that missionary journey. But, and, and so it may seem like that that mission trip was almost over, like they're about to head back. Um, you know, but the fact is, is they returned back the way they came. It would have been so much easier for Paul and Barnabas to just kind of continue to head east. They could have hit uh, Tarsus. I mean, that's Paul's hometown. They could have gotten some home cooking and headed right on back to Antioch. And, and, and it would have been a much shorter distance than going back through all of those cities and, as they did and in the return trip. So really, they, they were really only halfway done uh, with the trip, although Luke doesn't give much space to that in the record. But the description of what they did indicates that they did much in their return trip, and that it probably took them many more months to return back, just as they had, had, had gone, just based on what we're about to read here and what they did. So in verses 22 and 23, uh, it gives us four, Luke gives us, uh, in his record, he gives us four ministries that Paul and Barnabas undertook with those disciples in those cities who submitted to the gospel uh, as they traveled back, as Paul and Barnabas traveled back through each of the cities where these fledgling churches had kind of sprung up. And so I want to look at those in verses 22 and 23. Um, so the first thing that we read there in verse 22 is they, as they, they, they preached the gospel of that city and made many disciples, we read in verse 21, they returned. So they returned back, and as they returned, they did what? Verse 22, strengthening the souls of the disciples. So they strengthened the souls of the disciples. They returned back to Lystra, Iconia, and Antioch, of the city to strengthen the disciples, to make them firm. It conveys the idea of, of placing props against a structure to keep it from falling. And, uh, you know, when we put up the church sign in, in Fiji and, and at the church there, Boonie Val Bible Church, we put up the church sign. I, I, I kind of looked at the fence out front and I thought, well, those are pretty hefty posts and and, uh, and so I thought, well, let's just, uh, let's just attach the sign to the fence. It will be, uh, you know, that'll be a lot easier. We won't have to put up posts and do all of that business. So I just, we just put the sign and attached it to the fence. Well, we get, we get some pretty major hurricanes in Fiji, just like you do here. And uh, so at the end of 20, uh, what was that, 2020 and early 2021, we got two massive hurricanes and did a lot of damage in Fiji. Uh, but, but one of those hurricanes, it, of course, you know, you've got this big sign. It takes take the wind, you know, it takes the wind, catches the wind. It just kind of leans that fence right over. And what we really needed to do, and I should have known better, uh, but what we really needed to do was to provide some diagonals, right, on those posts to, to give it some, some support and strengthen those posts so we can stand up in the midst of that storm. And likewise, without sufficient support, uh, these new believers in each of those cities and new believers now in this day and age uh, are going to lack the stability that they need. Uh, and they may fall under pressure. And we all need this. And this really comes through the Word of God and as we learn to live by faith. And, you know, that's one of the things that we spent, as I mentioned earlier, that's one of the things we've spent the last couple of years doing. Uh, we were able to meet with uh, Sonal and his wife Mona uh, weekly during, during these last uh, couple of years. And we went through uh, an overview of the Bible with them to provide those diagonals. Uh, that would provide more stability. And uh, we went through Romans together. Uh, and as we did that, there were so many other opportunities uh, in, to, to discuss and talk about practical areas, uh, you know, 
marriage and family and, and you know, and, and disciple making, all of these things, all of these things came up as we would meet together with him. And uh, such a such a uh, uh, an opportunity to do that. I'm thankful uh, to see them growing, being strengthened, uh, and to see what what God is doing there. Um, we see there the second thing in verse 22. So, so they were verse 22. They were strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith, and saying that through many tribulations. We must enter the kingdom of God. Uh, so they exhorted them to continue in the faith. Um, this is really so important. I mean, new and old disciples alike face all kinds of pressures, uh, both from within and from without. Um, and we, we have to urge them, uh, encourage them, continue alongside with them. In the faith, and they need this because they're they're you know they're struggling. Sometimes doubts creep in, right? Um, I remember a few years ago, one of the the leaders, one of the men in, in our church at the time, was struggling with his salvation, and uh, and you know he really knew the gospel. He was trusting in Christ, and he's such a um, just a, a great guy. He loves the Lord. He loves people. Uh, he's a doctor and he just has a passion for people and reaching them with the gospel. And I think it, for some reason in his mind, he was struggling with, well, um, you know, maybe somehow I, what I'm doing here in serving people or whatever, I'm somehow depending on that, uh, on that particular thing or this work or whatever for my salvation. Even though if you asked him, he'd say, no, I'm not. But in his mind, he was struggling with that. And what he needed was... Uh, to be able to focus back in, return back, not that we ever leave it, but return back to those those truths, those precious truths of the gospel. And I remember just kind of giving him some, uh, you know, some verses on that. And, uh, and the Lord used that, used some various things in his life, and he was able to really come out of that and, uh, and really overcome that and, and, and really has become a solid leader in our, our church. Uh, of, of course, we see also that disciples face tribulations uh, from without. Um, they were all aware, all of those uh, disciples in those various cities that Paul was traveling to, they're all aware of the opposition to the gospel um, in those cities, right? Um, and really throughout the Roman Empire, they witnessed, they, um, they, they saw Paul um, and the apostles being beaten, right? Um, Paul testified even to that and what was going on there in those cities. In 2 Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 to 12, he, say, he says, Hey, you know my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra, which persecutions I endured, yet from them all the Lord rescued me. So here's Timothy. Here's a guy who, he was one of those guys, right? He was one of those people in those towns that, 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 uh, that, that witnessed this, that saw that. And Paul looks back and says, hey, you know what happened. You saw it. So all of these, these new disciples, they had witnessed that, and they no doubt would face some of the same. And so we have to tell, and they had to tell, we have to tell, new Christians that they must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. We don't tell them. We don't tell them from now on your life is going to be great. Everything is going to go perfectly and it just everything is going to be wonderful in your life. We don't tell them that because that's what that's not what Jesus promised, right? That's not what Jesus promised. You know, I, I, I remember when uh, Sonal turned from idols to serve the living God. Um, he faced some serious opposition from his uh, father, and it's a very strong Hindu, and they kind of live under the same roof, although they're, it's divided, their house is kind of divided by a wall, and so there's two sort of flats, I guess, but um, you can hear everything that's going on on the other side. 
But, you know, here he is, and he's just turned to Christ. And I can remember that uh, in that time, his wife would also, you know, he's getting it from his, from his father, but his wife is also saying, Stonewall, give this up. You're causing problems in the family. And just, just leave all of that. Just come back and just let things go back to the way they were. And, uh, and I remember him, you know, I remember in those days us talking about that. I remember us telling him, you know, and, and, and just sharing in the Word of God and just showing him that, hey, this is what's going to happen. Right? We talked about persecution because he was facing it pretty early on. And so we were talking about that. And uh, one, of, one of the uh, most amazing things I remember him saying was that um, he, would, he would tell me that, and that was one way that he knew that it was real uh, because he, he read in the scriptures, I think it was John 15, where Jesus said, if they persecute me, they will also persecute you. And so when he began to get persecution, he was like, oh, well, it's true. That's what Jesus said was going to happen. And now I'm seeing it in my life. And so uh, that was one of the ways that he knew that Christianity and what's the truth? It's amazing, isn't it, to think like that, to, to think that uh, someone uh, would come to that uh, and that that would be what the Lord uses to, to confirm the truth of, of, the, of the gospel. Um, but, you know, in all of this, we can encourage them. Okay, so like, yes, we are telling them, um, we're, we're encouraging them, urging them to continue in the faith, Right? Uh, because they're going to face it. They're going to face the doubts, right? I face doubts. Maybe some of you have faced doubts uh, in, with your salvation or just whatever in life. We're going to face those doubts. And so we encourage them. We urge them to continue in the faith. Uh, and, and we also talk to them about that we're going to face trials. We're going to face potentially persecution. But we can also encourage them because what they said was that through many tribulations, you must enter the kingdom of God. What a wonderful thing to know that, yes, we may face persecution in this life, but we will one day enter the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ is going to return, and he is going to reign, and we're going to be a part of that, and we're going to enjoy all the wonder of that. So we can encourage them at the same time, though we, though we, we do talk about the, tra the challenges of this life. So we keep our eyes, even from this, we keep our eyes set on his coming. In verse 23, the third thing that we read here, the ministries that they were part of and taking part in, is in verse 23. It says there, and when they had appointed elders for them in every church with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. So the third thing that we see here is that they appointed elders in every church. Now, while it's clear that, um, that churches had already been planted, they weren't completed as of yet. And, um, and so here, they, uh, there was more organizing that was needed. And most importantly, they had to establish leadership. And so they appointed elders. And this really is vital in disciple making. You know, every disciple needs a local body of believers to be a part of, a church with qualified leaders. And uh, now here we're not told how they appointed, how they appointed those elders, how that process went. We don't know if the church, if the body of believers had a part in that selection or what. Um, we're really not told. We assume that they're qualified leaders, just as Paul had would later in 1 Timothy 3 and Titus 1 record the qualifications of an elder? We assume those were there, uh, but we're really not told how those were selected. But one of the things that we, uh, one of the things that we are given here that Luke gives here, and a very important thing that was part of the appointment process, process is that they pray with fasting. You know, the future of these churches was so important and really depended upon biblically. Biblically qualified leadership. And so uh, they prayed and sought the Lord to provide those leaders for those churches. And, uh, you know, as we seek the Lord, the Lord can provide uh, the right people for the churches. 
Now, I remember praying often uh, that God would raise up leaders in our church, and a lot of times I didn't know how he was going to do that, and the Lord did it in his way, and, and, and I'm amazed for how, for how he did it. God provided in that way. The Lord's raised up uh, good leaders, solid leaders for this local body of believers, and, and there, there probably are others that are maybe in the wings that the Lord is, 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 is preparing right now and, and, and will be leaders in the future. And that's so important that that continue on, uh, that leaders be developed. And then the last thing, they commended them to the Lord. Paul made many disciples, he established a church, and then he entrusted that church to qualified leaders. I mean, did he know that they were going to do well? Did he know that that church was going to continue on? Probably not. I mean, some of the churches didn't do so well. I mean, that's when we read the book of 1 Corinthians, you'll see a church that didn't do well, and Paul's having to deal with a bunch of problems in those churches. Um, uh, but it was vital that he commend them to the Lord in whom they had believed. And ultimately, he was call, called to move on to the next area and do what he had done in Asia Minor in that place. And then kind of to repeat that cycle. And so it's important for us. And we have to entrust it to others. And, you know, some have stayed too long for a variety of reasons. But the fact is um, that these believers, they have the Word of God, they have the Spirit of God, and that's, that's sufficient. That's enough. And so we have, to, we have to kind of entrust that to those leaders and, and it's not, even in, in the case of Paul here, it wasn't that uh, when he moved on that he was done with them. Uh, Paul certainly wasn't done with them. He wrote the letter Galatians to these churches in Asia Minor. Uh, he would return again on a second missionary journey through that area, and then again in the third trip. But <clears throat> he committed them to the Lord. He committed that work to them and they continued on you know I, I read this I, I read this passage this morning to you for a couple of reasons um, first of all from 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 what I know and from what I understand talking to Pastor Gary and others of you you know I see there's a desire there's a there's a thrust for these things right here in this church um, you know and, and I want to encourage us all to continue in the work of making disciples, which this passage kind of helps us to define, right? It is, it is strengthening their souls, urging them to continue on in the faith. It is to establish uh, and, and develop leaders and entrust them, that work to them, and then to commend them to the Lord's care. That's kind of disciple making. And then secondly, what did Paul and Barnabas do after they left Asia Minor? If you read on down through the next few verses there, they reported to the church at Antioch all that God had done with them and, and how that God had opened the door to the Gentiles, that would open the door of faith to the Gentiles. And that's what we hoped to do right here this morning. You know, I've shared... Uh, uh, with you of what God has done in Fiji. And my prayer is that that would cause thanksgivings to abound, thanksgiving to abound to God um, for what uh, he's done and to realize that, that what we see in, in Acts 14 and throughout uh, the, this record is happening over and over throughout the world. It's happening um, right here in, in, in Luling. Um, it's happening uh, all over the world. It's happening in a place in Mombasa, uh, Fiji, among Indian people there as the Lord has planted his church, established his church, and brought that about, exactly what we're talking about here. And we've been privileged uh, to be a part of what God has done there and to see him establish his church among the Indian people of Fiji. And we look forward with confidence and and in his power to make more disciples, establish more churches in Fiji. And so pray with us as, as we do that. And we'll pray for you as, as you continue in the work of making disciples right here in this area where God has called you. Well, I'll pray.
Father, thank you so much for uh, this opportunity that we've had this morning to, to, to see uh, what you have done uh, there in Fiji, how you have taken, taken uh, some people who didn't know you, who were trapped in even another religion, um, were, were dead in sin, and you have, um, you have through your gospel, um, you have converted them. You have regenerated them, uh, given them new life, and you have uh, you have continued and, and and working in them. Your spirit has continued to mature them, and you have brought these believers together in one body. You've raised up leaders there in that church. You've done great and mighty things there in Lombasa, Fiji, and we give you the praise for that. Uh, we are. are we have the opportunity, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be able to look into your word this morning in Act 14 and see what uh, what you did so long ago. Uh, the example, sort of the, uh, the model by which uh, we look today and we fall, follow in what you did so many years ago and uh, through Paul and Barnabas and others in planting and starting churches in those early days. And... Uh, Help us, Lord, to, to, to be about those things. Help us to be committed to the things that you, to what you have called us to uh, in these days, uh, in these what could be, what are the last days. Um, and, and help us to be committed to that, that we might see many uh, turn to the Savior um, and, and to be saved, to, uh, to walk in your ways, to be followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us in that. Lord, help us to be about the work of making disciples right here in this place uh, and, 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 and in other places around this world. You've been so good to us. Uh, you've, you've, you've saved us and you're, you're leading us and you continue to do that. Help us to, uh, to depend upon your spirit as we, as we go out even uh, today and going into this next week that we might be about the work that you've given us to do. Thank you for this time. In Jesus' name. Amen.